Starting with Surprise Island, every boxcar children book takes place in a different summer vacation. Yet somehow these kids have never aged a day. That's the real mystery of this book series. Argofomp book review, Argofomp book review. The boxcar children are visiting Aunt Jane again. Thanks to the uranium mine, life in the local town has boomed. Why, the town even has its own newspaper! Today's headline? Uranium was found in the uranium mine! That's the headline most days, actually. It's not a very good newspaper. As you would expect, the town needs some cheap labor for the mine, so they have shipped in a lot of poor people, including Mike Wood! Mike appeared in Surprise Island for one chapter. He's basically the same as Benny, except he has bad grammar and gets in fights more often. Sometimes he's entertaining, and sometimes he's so annoying it makes you want to stop reading the book entirely. Like I said, he's basically the same as Benny. Mike's family is so poor, his mother takes in laundry for a living. She complains that she works so much with the laundry she never has any free time. Oh, and she just made four pies so everybody can eat lots of pie. Which sort of makes me think she's got a lot of free time on her hands. Mike shows off an old newspaper. He tried to get on the front page by photobombing a story about the mine. But what's this? Mike was cropped out of the photograph! Instead, some other guy is in the picture. Mike gets super angry about a stranger stealing his spotlight. Unsurprisingly, the stranger will be this book's culprit, because no one gets away with upsetting Mike. In Chapter 4, Mike's house burns down. The boxcar children love being homeless, so they are happy about this new adventure. They make plans for where Mike is going to live now, and they search town for a new residence. There's an empty building that nobody's using, and since the boxcar children technically own the entire town, they decide the building's going to be Mike's new home, nobody argues. Then, they get a better idea. Mike's mother can put a stove in her new home, and she can live out her dream of making pies all day long. They name this new restaurant Mike's Mother's Place. We have to name it after Mike, because obviously Mrs. Wood doesn't have a name of her own. Mike's Mother's Place is an instant success. She sells 50 pies per day for the rest of her life. Oh boy, isn't that a great ending. Now, most of the book focuses on the pie restaurant and buying things for the new house, but there's also a mystery. A man in a blue hat starts spreading rumors that Mike burned down his house for fun. Suspicious, but the blue hat man also... Oh, is that the only evidence we have? Okay. Blue Hat Man thought Mike was playing with matches, so Blue Hat Man must be the culprit. And clearly he is the stranger who stole Mike's spot in the newspaper as part of a plot to ruin Mike's life. Because clearly it's impossible that two different people would mildly inconvenience Mike, right? right? Turns out the entire situation is Mike's fault. One day, he was bragging about how he's a great guy and how he could have stopped the culprits in the last book. Well, one of those culprits just happened to be standing around, and he heard this, so he got revenge by burning Mike's house down. Whoa, a six-year-old trash talks you, and you respond by burning their house down? Harsh, culprit! The fire was intended to be a distraction so the culprit could blow up the uranium mine, we know this because there are some wires behind the mine. Obviously, wires are proof that somebody has TNT, right? The kids throw a pie party, complete with a documentary about monkeys. While everyone is distracted, the culprit tries to blow up the mine a second time, but he is caught by Mike's dog. Yeah, Mike's dog catches the culprit. He's a better detective than Mike and the boxcar children combined. Go figure. Post-book follow-up. Speaking of the dog being a great detective, the cover is Mike's dog digging in the sand. He digs up a blue hat and a can of gasoline, which proves Blue Hat Man is the culprit. I find it odd that the culprit tried to get rid of all of the evidence except for the bomb wires. Why would you bury your hat before burying the bomb wires? What makes you think the hat is more suspicious evidence? This book rewrites the previous book by saying the culprits discovered the uranium mine by accident. 
They were living on Aunt Jane's ranch for a long time. I don't think that was an accident. But hey, unlike last book, we actually see the culprit this time. At the very end, when he's being arrested, he doesn't say anything, but it's better than having an unseen culprit. I didn't like this book very much, since most of it was about making Mike a new home and selling pies. The mystery parts were better, but it's still not a good mystery. The solution pretty much boils down to, that one guy was kind of mean once, so he's the culprit. But hey, this book does a way better job of balancing the mystery with the other storyline than the last two books, and it's mostly entertaining. So I'm going to be generous with the score here. I get Boxcar Children number 5, Mike's Mystery, a 7 out of 10. Am I just giving the book a high score because the main character is Mike and I am Michael? I, I think that might be it, yeah.